to me. <laughs> yeah. But if you want it, if you want to, um, just give me some info or something. Or I'll get. I'll yeah. bring you some stuff. Okay. It's a good way to give back to. Yeah. Something that gave all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's call a meeting to order for the Market Township Planning Commission, May tenth, twenty twenty-three at seven o three. And we'll do the roll call. Uh, Steve Haken at Lake Enchantment. Dennis Ferraro, Eagles Nest Road. Tim Johnson, White Oak Drive. Linda Winslow, Norwood Street, Market Township. Eric Power, Staff Flyer. Approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Minutes from previous meeting of May 10th, 2023. Move to approve the previous uh, minute of the prior meeting of May 10th, 2023. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, any public comment from either of you gentlemen right now before we get into the agenda items? Okay. Don't move. Just the bystander. That sun's right in my eyes if you move your head. <laughs> yeah, right. That's from off the top of my head. No, no. <laughs> and I take it Jason's not coming tonight? Nope. Okay. All right, 6A, special use permit public hearing request for proposed short-term rental unit to be located at 710 County Road 550 in Marquette within the Rural Residential District. Parcel tax ID number is 5208132022100. The applicant is Paul Fafo, PO Box 175, Big Bay, Michigan. Eric. Yep, so we have received a um, complete application, special land use application for a short term rental at 710 County Road 550. Uh, that lies within the rural residential zoning district. Um, you can see the subject parcel up on the screen there. Uh, included in your packet tonight is the full application, including uh, site plan, surveys, legal descriptions, uh, everything else. Um, so staff would recommend scheduling the public hearing for Wednesday, June 14 at 7 p.m. And um, would we be able to get, I, I think I'd I think it was you I talked to, and not Jason, but um, a listing of all the uh, short-term rentals we've approved right yep. now and their addresses just so we kind of know where everything is and if there are, are other in the areas or... Yeah, I apologize for not having that ready for this meeting, but I can uh, make sure it's updated with the recent ones that have either been approved or denied. I think they've all been approved recently. Okay. And I can send that out. All right. And the applicant is here if, if you do have any questions okay. of me or him. So. Mr. Pappel? Are you Mr. Pappel? Yes. Yep. So this isn't your first rodeo. You, you have uh, renters up in Big Bay as well? Yes, I do. Who, uh, who uh, takes care of the maintenance of your short-term rentals. Do you do that yourself? I do, yes. Is, is this the parcel here? Yes, it is, uh, in red. Okay. I can't see a structure on that. Uh, <clears throat> it's very hard to see. Right okay. Here. The trees are yep. like right over. Can you have your own well and septic system and it's not shared with anyone else? Or? Correct. Okay. The building was completely brought up to cope today's standards, codes, the whole place. Okay. Just yeah. recently or? Yes. And included in your packet is some of that permit information from the county, uh, the permits that were pulled to bring it up to code. 
Yeah, I see the electrical permit is in here, but I don't see that the permit was approved or any fees were paid. Do you have an actual? Well, actually, they do have, Jason has copies of it. Um, yeah, we must have the, the uh, permit that you applied with, but not that it was approved. It does not get, uh, per, I have a uh, temporary occupancy right now. Okay. I needed to get the deck on it. No, I'm talking about the electrical permit. Oh, electrical? Oh, yeah, that was all, yeah, that was all approved. Oh, we yeah. can... Sorry to interrupt, we can certainly make sure that any record of okay. approved permits is included in the okay. public hearing packet. Okay. Mr. Paffel, just in terms of like familiar landmarks, where about the, is 710? Uh, Do you know where the Lindbergh uh, quarry is? Yes. The rock quarry? Yes. It is directly across the street. Sure, okay. And then um, my property butts up to the old saloon trail. Which used to be Snuffies. Snuffies. And the old Sloop Trail goes back, and there's some big, beautiful homes right back behind my property. Any old stills back there? Uh, there may be. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, how many um, do we have on that date? This isn't the first one. So, so, the other two are they? The I think, same? yep, we've got the other two that we approved last meeting. Um, and then assuming you also approve the, the one next on your agenda, that would make four public hearings. And they're all short term rentals? Uh, no. Three short term rentals and the daycare. Site plan. Site plan. Yeah. won't make us too busy, right? What about Forest Hill? I heard rumors that that might be coming up here. Yep, I, I'll, we've got that on the agenda. I can give more information about that. Uh, but the public hearing for that, which is set by staff, uh, will be the 2nd June meeting, which I believe is the 24th or 28th. Okay. So, yep, that's coming right around the corner, but that is not on the June 14th. Meeting. Okay. I don't see any problem with scheduling a public hearing. So everything looks in order. And anyone wants to make a motion? I move to schedule a public hearing for the short term rental unit in 710 County Road 550 as described in item 6A of today's agenda. On June 14th. On June 14th, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, Jerry. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We're all set for June 14th. Is that meeting held here? Yep. Yes. I should be here for that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not a bad idea. Not, I tell everybody, not mandatory, but we do advise it that you're present for both meetings. So, what what time will that be? Seven o'clock. Same thing. Yep. Um, may uh, it might not be right on the nose at seven like this one is, since we do have three other public hearings that night. So you might be second, third, or fourth, but the meeting will start at seven. And I can follow up either tomorrow or next week with some more information for you before that. Just out of curiosity, I thought there had to be a 30-day window. I mean, this, today's the 24th, right? What would it be on the 14th? I don't think it's 30 days. Um, 15 for a public 15 hearing. 15 for a public hearing. That's it. So these will go out, letters will go out tomorrow. Okay. To make sure we meet that deadline. Okay. okay. 6B. Special use permit public hearing request for a proposed daycare center to be located at 650 Commerce Drive in Marquette within the zone development district. 
Parcel tax ID number is 5208450-00700. Applicant David and Jennifer Hayes, 4996 Danforth Road in Escanaba. Eric? Yep, so staff has received a uh, application for a special land use to conduct a daycare center at the mentioned location, 650 Commerce Drive, uh, which is within the development district. Um, as I just said, uh, any daycare center land use is a special land use, so um, it needs that approval. Um, assuming it is approved at the suggested public hearing date, um, immediately following that public hearing at the same meeting, we would hold a, a site, the site plan review portion because that's also needed as part of this. Um, so kind of two components going on, but this is strictly for the special use permit public hearing. And staff would recommend scheduling that for Wednesday, June 14 at 7 p.m. So will, will the site plan review be a, a part of that or will it be two separate agenda items? It'll be two separate agenda items, um, but again, it'll assuming it's approved, it'll happen back to back. Okay. Good size of daycare, 98 children. Mm -hmm. Yep, and the site plan is included in your packet tonight, um, and we will have a we have full size sets available, and I'll have a full size set available at that meeting on the table over here. Should you want to review it? So this is, this is right on the road here. Yep. This way. Yep. First one you're going to come in on the right. The first one before the building here on the on the right hand side. No, nope. like before the first building there. Straight across the pond that you see on the left side there is that pond on the kind of Westwood or the mall property. Okay. And so it's straight across from that pond. Okay. And the only reason this triggers a special use permit requirement is due to its proximity to a residential land use. Okay. Um, since it's adjacent to that you can see one right there but then the parcel to the south there that it kind of butts up against those are both residential uh, so due to that it triggers a special use permit requirement what's the narrow strip right there that is undeveloped right of way the na well undeveloped right away that ends before commerce drive so it doesn't go through that parcel does not go through the parcel no hmm. badger street comes from the East to the west stop short and then it, that must be like an alley or something. Well, I think it's undeveloped <laughs> street. I, I want to backtrack on saying it's undeveloped right away because I'm pretty sure that's kind of the call it the south extension of Ryan's Alley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is up in like Curran's property over here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure that thicker this thicker part is undeveloped right away owned by the county and I assume the county would own that too, but well, I would refer I would refer to the east west. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There, there are quite a bit of woods and trees in between that and that house. Yeah, along the, the back. Yeah, a lot of big trees. And it kind of goes up a hill there. And yeah, and we're following the buffer yard. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to discuss that next. But, but we do have a complete, we submitted the site plan complete and everything in 15, 16 days. So we the 30 day for the site plan. And we also requested the special use of that. And the hazes would have been here, but I, I told them not at this meeting. I said you need to be prepared when the public's here to have that. And, and based on the last meeting, I that, it sounds like we need daycare bad. So they said now is the time to move. Yeah. <laughs> Any idea how many staff they're going to be hiring? Uh, they staff with, they have a total of 16 staff during the day that kind of expands during the day and then contracts near the end of the day. The main part of the day is there. It's based on, time. it's the staffing yeah. is based on the age of the children. Yeah, so there must be a lot of infants. Well, yeah, there's, yeah, it's all like toddlers and, and younger children. It's, they own six different uh, daycares of this style through the UP right now. Mm -hmm. They've just been looking to get in the market area. Um, so, so they got a lot of history on their 
Who, who regulates that? Is there a department of state? The state does. They're all licensed with the state and everything. Okay. And, and they'll be able to explain their their process and, and how they, they're pretty detailed when they first talk to me. That's pretty impressive. We need it to be open till midnight. <laughs> we have shift work people in our community. Well, that might be a good recommendation to them. But <laughs> See, I think the problem is getting people to actually work, no, it's not so much. Mm -hmm. They work. It's people work. <laughs> well, we can certainly, I can certainly imagine that thing's <laughs> right. all the requirements mm -hmm. so I'll make a motion that we um, schedule a public hearing for the proposed daycare center to be located at 650 Commerce Drive right across from the fire department is that correct not right across but close enough close enough. Okay. close enough and all those other numbers how's that Eric just get a just get a date for me in that motion <laughs> well you want it to be on June 14th yeah. Okay, and that's enough time to do it tomorrow, right? Yep. You guys are all set. Okay. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We're all set for on the 14th with that one. Thank you. We'll see you. All right. See you on the 14th. <laughs> Thank you for your time, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. All right, solar energy systems, proposed ordinance amendments. Continued discussion, Eric. Yep, so in your packet tonight, uh, I do have a updated staff report. Much of it remains the same from the previous ones you've seen. And then also I include Article 16, which is where the bulk of the proposed language lies. I did hand out, just before the meeting started, um, a page from that, what is it, article is it? Article 15 which is the use table nomograph um, or the use zoning district nomograph. Um, and on the <coughs> back side of that, highlighted in yellow, um, you will see what we are proposing as far as uh, the approval requirements for different types of solar energy uses. Nothing has changed there since you previously saw this. I just wanted to kind of refresh everybody's memory um, as that's kind of the the bulk of what we're doing or what we're aiming to do with this. Um, some of the changes that we have made after consulting with industry and policy people more on this since that last meeting um, would be how we are, I guess, defining the size and capacity of systems. Previously, we had kilowatt kilowatts in there production-wise, um, and Brad Newman with Michigan State Extension said that he doesn't really know of any small systems that are, or any systems that are 10 kilowatt or under. Um, so in talking with people from Peninsula Solar, they suggested that we use amps instead. Um, so for example, uh, I'm gonna hopefully recall this correctly, um, they stated like with the BLP's installation on Wright Street, that's like a, a thousand amp system. So obviously that's utility grade. And when we're talking about somebody putting rooftop solar in or a small ground mounted system, um, it's going to be 800 or under. Um, so that's the number that we got from Peninsula Solar. And so that's kind of what we're working with as far as our cutoff is that 800 amp mark. And there's no, there's no top limit on the principal use? Is 800 amps or more? Yep. Okay. Um, in addition to that, we added land use intensity designations um, to ground mounted systems um, in the event. So again, say we've got a proposal for a large installation like BLPs on Wright Street. Um, and so by adding a land use designation to that, and we designated it as a five, which is the highest in our land use designation or land use intensity designations um, 
by putting that basically anywhere triggers screening requirements to neighboring properties. So say it's a vacant parcel in the middle of a rural residentially zoned area um, and the applicants go through the special use permit process, it gets approved, it gets put in, and now we've got residential land users that are complaining about eyesores or whatever else they may complain about. The, the, the land use intensity designation will trigger those screening requirements that already exist in our zoning ordinance. Are you talking about the, the solar energy systems? Yep. You have no land use intensity listed? Not on here, oh, no. Okay. So that would be found in Article 19, Performance Requirements, which is this also another table in our zoning ordinance, so similar looking, um, but that's where we find the land use intensity. But you list it for the wind energy systems? Oh, I see what you're saying. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying now. Okay. So, yeah, so under large principal use solar energy systems, um, under LUI, that would be a five, correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so and then the accessory use is is up to how many amps of service? 800. 800? I have a good sized home and I have 200 amp service in there with power to spare. What, what residential home would use 800 amp service? Likely none. <laughs> I would guess likely none. My God, the solar energy system, the, the panels you would have to generate 800 amps of service would be stunningly big. So are you sure that, uh, and, that and that anybody can put that in there then? Without any special use? Keep in mind that they any applicant is going to have to go through some pretty strict requirements as far as the electrical permit goes from the county. No, I got you. I'm just talking about the visual impact of an 800 amp solar energy system. I mean, it's got to be huge. It's got to be huge. So, I mean, I, I'm just curious about the limit that 800 amp service. That's, that seems stunningly big to me. How, how is that, again, I know you just explained it, but can you explain it again? How was that arrived at, that, that number? Because the, previously what we had in there um, was, kil was kilowatts. Yeah. Or we were also discussing like square footage size requ yeah. limitations yeah. or things like that. And both of those were kind of, in talking with people, kind of tossed out the window as being irrelevant or not a great way to measure a size of a system being that as technology changes, they're going to shrink and their production capacity is going to keep going, growing. So the amps was suggested as a way, a more appropriate way to measure so, was size. Was it a conversion from the kilowatts that were originally? So we got this basically from the Marquette City ordinance, correct? A lot of it, right? We, we uh, some of the language, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then from there we've refined it with industry people from Peninsula Solar and a couple other companies and then uh, Brad Newman from Michigan State Extension um, and then we've clarified it from there to take things out that aren't working in the city or clarifying things that... But to, to answer Steve's question, is the 800 amp factor or number the equivalent of what the prior designation was in kilowatt hours? Roughly, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. I, I, I would ask that you just check on that. Just, okay. Just, just for my curiosity, you know, just maybe just ask the uh, the uh, solar boys that you're dealing with, <laughs> how big is an 800 amps system? You know, it's not going to sit on a roof. I can guarantee you that. I mean, it's going to be massive. Well, if, if that's a lot is that of what power. Northern it too? depends on storage too, right? And the, and like not not to. But the, but the thing's got to generate. It's going to get. Smaller. Not to oversimplify it, but. Amps can be compared to like in a water system, the flow of right. the water, um, as, as compared to kilowatts, which is like the production right. potential. Okay. Yeah, I, so I, guess, I, 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 I agree with you. Um, I could uh, be mixing metaphors here, but I'm just—it just seems a little large to me. But. Well, isn't when I'm reading this on number four here on page forty. And it says 800 amps or over operated by a public utility government entity or on-site business only. But then if you go back and look at 39, principal use for generating less than 800 amps. And the ground mounted is also less than, so it's the, the smaller ones are less than 800 amps and the bigger one is over 800 amps. 
Right. Is that what mm -hmm. this is saying? Is yep. That, okay. So if it's residential, it's under 800. <laughs> I yeah. guarantee it. But residential, I, I, I see what you're saying, Steve, because it can be up to. You look at your, you you look at your breaker box. You know, I have a huge breaker box, and it's a 200 amp service. Yeah. And the cables coming in there like this big. So oh, you're so you're saying how would, how would it ever get up to 800? Okay. Yeah. I got how big a system would it have to be to generate that kind of power? Okay. Other than that. But no, that, I can certainly look into that and clarify it. Okay. And then. Did I have any other? The only other thing that we clarified. I'd say a thousand, thousand, thousand watts as we have. The only other thing that I clarified would be under 3B, so under the ground mounted solar energy systems, the height. Thousand watts, 10, 20 amps. Um, we were again tossing around how we wanted to define that, and. 18 feet is the maximum permitted height for accessory structures basically in any district. So that 18 feet number we landed at. Well, we'll it. If we put something outside this building, it can't be higher than 18 feet. Nope. If it's ground mounted. If it's ground mounted. Well, that's and if it's on roof mounted. It won't be roof mounted. Roof mounted. It can't be more than three feet above the surface of the roof. Yeah. Yeah. And it, with the roof mounted systems, kind of talking more about that changing technology, I think they're getting more and more to the point where they're being flush with the roof rather than well, they got put the on brackets. I think they're in the shingles. Right. Yeah. If there's, there's a far way to go with all this, and by the time they're done, we'll see. We'll see. Natural gas is still. So, so it, do, it won't matter how high the, if it's two or three story roof? It's three feet above that? As long as they're as staying the within the three feet. No. Okay. So yeah, there might be a little, when we're talking about, like in the urban residential district, for a residential dwelling, the max height permitted is 30 feet. So say you got a 30 foot structure in there, in somewhere in Trowbridge, and they propose solar panels, we might be playing with the, you get three feet above the 33, um, but we're keeping it within that three feet. So, it, regardless of Steve's concern, I mean, in consideration of Steve's concern about an 800 amp uh, system being uh, for the uh, accessory use, which is the regular homeowner use, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's a limit on the size, is there a limit on the size of the solar panels already in this ordinance? I don't know if I understand what you're asking. Well, I mean, he's okay. concerned about uh, unsightly uh, gigantic panels. Right. But is there a limit? Uh, what I'm asking you is, is there already a limitation in terms of size and mounting in this that would necessarily uh, uh, obviate that concern? In other words, you know, it, no matter what, if it's 800 amps, it doesn't matter because we have already a limit on the size and the way it can be installed. Well, we, we've got yeah. height limits and we have language in here that says that any installation must conform to the existing setbacks of the district. So it's not like somebody could put come in and put it right on the property line. They've got to conform to the set, existing setbacks. Is that, so, so it's three. Does that satisfy your concern? It's three um, B. As long as nobody's putting up one next to my house. <laughs> well, what about? Don't you think maybe we we should consider the square footage of all of the panels together and put a limit on that? I guess what you're saying is that technology changes so fast. You know, it's just it's going to become obsolete pretty quick. Yeah, but I, like like I said, well, they're not going to get bigger. They would only get smaller, smaller or like like thinner <laughs> on the yeah. sheets on your roof. You know. Yeah. So I mean, can yeah. somebody put twenty panels up in their yard right now? There's no limitation on it, so you could then, right? But what are you generating that? I mean, if Steve's right. You know, most of us maybe have 200 amp services in our house. It's a lot of power. It must be going to be. Is there a sell back? Um, yeah, is there well, a buyback? There was. Here? I don't know if there still is. I thought it was. Board. I thought it expired. Oh, I don't know. I haven't. I think you probably just spins your meter back. <laughs> Yeah, what if you wanted to produce power to sell, I, I, then, you know, you, 
don't know. Then it becomes a I don't think they buy it. I don't think the, the grid system buys it from you anymore. I think they do. They do? Here? I think so. I, I, I think all, I thought Alger Delta... Uh, it wouldn't just be Alger Delta, though. Could, right. I think the VLP does. And okay. Hmm. Do you have an idea about that? Or? I do not, no. I think I, I think I read, I'm pretty sure I read that, the BLP does. I mean, they used to buy it back. Well, is there any way we can pass this thing tonight? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy with it. Yeah, so, I remember. so it goes to the so the next, board next. next step would be a public hearing. Oh, and then to okay. the public. Okay. Okay. So another public hearing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then from there, I'd, before it goes to the Not board. Not the 14th, though. <laughs> Not the 14th, <laughs> no. Um, and not the 28th either. So we're looking at the first meeting in July. Okay. Um, actually, no, speaking with Jason today, he did say, let's do it on June 28th. So June, 20, June 28th would be the suggested public hearing date. But as far as the process goes, the next step would be that public hearing. From there, it gets sent, as per our ordinance, it gets sent to the county planning commission and they have a chance to review it and comment on it if they wish, and then from there it would go to the township board. Who could also, I believe, if they wish, request a public hearing be scheduled and have their own public hearing. But again, that's an option for them, for the board. Let's just invite them to the public hearing. So the motion would be to schedule a public hearing for June 28th. Yep. I don't know if that'd be the best date, but I guess if Jason wants to do it, then I think we're gonna. Yeah, we've been. I mean, with, there's, as you guys know, a lot of public hearings, a lot of things going on, so we're planning meetings out okay. pretty far ahead at this point. So. All right. Then I will look into those. The amps question. Um, I'll obviously add the land use intensity designations to this article, um, and then I can, if if the planning commission wishes, I can certainly send those changes out again and the full packet of proposed changes uh, before that public hearing. So. Okay. Motion. Move to schedule public hearing on the <clears throat> so, uh, the adoption of the solar energy system, as uh, discussed in item seven A and all the uh, attached documents. How about for June twenty eighth? I'll second that. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. Correspondence 8A, Longyear Realty Corporation preliminary PUD submittal update. So we have received their, I, I guess you could call it their, their full application. Um, materials will be made available to the Planning Commission, um, and those materials include a booklet of sorts with a narrative and their traffic impact studies and other studies they've had completed as well as a full size set of plans. So each planning commissioner will get that booklet and a full size set for review. Um, when? Leading up to the June 14th meeting and we will discuss it at the June 14th meeting. And then as I stated earlier in the meeting, uh, we will schedule that public hearing for June 28th. So the last time we were here, there was some mention of a uh, appropriations requ request. Where does that stand? S still out. Nothing. We heard nothing. I mean, it, it's, it's just like we're kind of with that. We're kind of at the mercy of the legislature. Okay, but that was to be decided by the end of this month. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was an end of the month kind of thing. What did she say? Is that for the road? Yeah. Well, it was. It was. Uh, uh, it was obviously a scramble to get it all put together to submit to the legislature, but at this point, right. now that now, it is lies... That, is that appropriations, has that already been been passed? And and these are just, or, or the, uh, the, the funding has it been passed, and these are just decisions of making, who's going to get the money? Or does this have to go through the legislative process through committee and 
all that kind of stuff. I thought the money was there and they were just applying for it. That's how I understand it. So then that, that must have already been passed and signed by the governor. So it's a pool of money that's sitting there and somebody is going to uh, adjudicate who gets the money. Correct. I think it's COVID money. Yeah, but we heard nothing. So nope, Jen, no update. Jen Hill, who is our representative, um, on Tuesday, June 6th at 6 p.m. is going to be um, meeting with us virtually. So she might be the person to really ask. Well, is it Marty for time involved? I yes. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know him? Ask him. Uh, I don't know him personally. No, I do not. No. no. Anyways, June 6th, if you um, are able to come at 6 p.m. to discuss township issues, it might um, be. That's here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Probably in the big room because the technology is better. This is where you're going to be with her virtually yeah. on June 6th? Probably in that one. Okay. I don't know which one. But, but that's the day you're going to be talking to her. Yes. That's what we want. It's a Tuesday. Well, it's always been old. I'm not a fan of virtual meetings for that. I'm not objecting. Well, you know, some people have raised their eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, 8B, 2023 property maintenance schedule update. That's simply on there to state that Jason and I will be starting canvassing in earnest next week. So going up 550, going through Trowbridge, going down 492, uh, and the rest. Lake so Enchantment? Down Lake Enchantment. Oh, <laughs> boy. Do, do you want us to send you addresses? If you've got them. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Steve and I went driving. Mm -hmm. There's some messes out there. I will, yeah, my wife and I and daughter went <laughs> went up Sugarloaf this past weekend and went by the a driving, couple yeah. of those on 550 that have, I know have been persistent problems throughout the years. So you know, I got a question. To, uh, I don't have any desire to interfere with anybody's property rights and the way they live, but isn't is there some kind of permit required for a, a junkyard? I mean, because. <laughs> A couple of those places on 550 have got like at least 20 cars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and whether they're a used car lot or whether they're a junkyard, I mean. And without mentioning property owners or specific properties, um, there is one particular one on 550 that the state has been involved with. E Eagle, formerly MDEQ. Yeah. Um, so there's one on there that they've been involved, the state's been involved because of the fluids and whatever else that are leaking out of those junk cars. So yeah. they're health hazards. Do we have an ordinance for junkyards, for permitting junkyards here in the do we have junkyards here in township? Do we have a junkyard? I don't even know if we have one. I don't we don't I don't know if I'd say we've got an ordinance for it, but I mean it's in not in that sheet that I handed out, but it's well, maybe we junkyards are listed. A, a gold star for for having our first junkyard. Yeah. Oh. Not at all. <laughs> they charge them for a permit. $10,000 for a permit. What do we care, right? <laughs> Maybe they could just turn it into a seminary then. <coughs> That's on here. Education a seminary. <laughs> I, I think with all the stuff, though, that we need to be as creative as we can to get things cleaned up. Um, I, I'm still... Um, I would rather pay for a dumpster to be put at their homes and have them use it than to continually send our staff there, do ticketing, not do anything. And it's still, Steve yeah, still but has see, stuff the thing going is, on. To them, it's not junk. No. They're not looking to throw it away. They're going to make some money on it. Well, I'm going to fix it up. Well, I'm going to save it. Well, I'm going to give it to my grandkids. That's not junk. They're, they're not looking for a place to throw it away. They're just collecting it there. Mm -hmm. oh, but I think... Cars without license, currently licensed cars, yeah. you can only have one or two in your yard, whatever the ordinance says. Yeah, you cannot have go, 20. But somebody's got to go out there and tell them that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they have. yes, I think they've no, been even told. one or two or three cars, somebody's got to go yeah, out there and And they have them. to be insured, too. There's a couple roles. And maybe, yes. Maybe Jason should wear his marine outfit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with uh, any case that comes up this year outside of the case down Lake Enchantment Way, um, since that's existing, uh, ongoing, we would call it, but any others will have to kind of go through that full process of send them a letter, wait a couple weeks, send another letter, wait a couple weeks, send a third letter, and then after that, we start the tickets. 
Um, and it's those tickets that are really what spurs action. So let me ask a question. So is this generated by our sense of what's proper, or is it generated by a complaint of a neighbor? Typically, well, obviously, I just stated that we're going to canvas, so I mean, that's not complaint based, but outside of kind of the initial canvassing at the beginning of the summer season, you could say it's complaint based. Um, okay. Obviously, when Jason and I or any other staff person are out and about going to lunch or from lunch or to or from home or going to or from a meeting, we'll keep our eyes peeled for problem properties, but if it's... How, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about like being the one to be the, I mean, not you, but you're right. a representative of this body to be the arbiter of what's beautiful and not beautiful or ugly or... I mean, we've got an ordinance that backs yes. me and other staff people up, so okay. it's really not like I'm going in there and saying, I personally find this ugly and offensive and okay. you need to clean it up. It's, this is a violation of the ordinance and we've had complaints and so you should clean it up. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to take further steps. And you're tall enough to right. be confident walking up on the property, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and at a previous job down in Grand Rapids, I did this basically full time. So, I right. mean, it's... You um, wear a hat, uh, like a Stetson? Yep. Not a Stetson, but ball cap. Okay. <laughs> well, I think a lot of those cars uh, fall under the, uh, isn't there an abandoned car ordinance? We can only... In, in, within our property maintenance ordinance, we have language regarding junk vehicles. Yeah. And so I, we define a junk vehicle as anything that cannot readily move on command, so you can't, if it can't get started up and draw, mm -hmm. drove forward or backward at all, then it's inoperable. Anything with flat tires is inoperable. Um, properties are allowed, I think it's one or maybe two unlicensed vehicles. I'm pretty sure it's one though. Um, so, but not to get too deep into the weeds, uh, no pun intended. Um, with my position in Grand Rapids, if we found a junk car, people would usually come out and say, no, you can't ticket me for that. Because the process down there was very, very much more straightforward, cut and dry. Here's an inoperable vehicle with flat tires and we're gonna slap a sticker on it. If it's not moved within seven days, the police are gonna come impound it. Um, and so they would come up, sit, or the resident of the structure would come out and say, that's not a junk car. And our answer would be, okay, start it up and move it for me then. And if they can start it up and pull it forward five feet and reverse it five feet, case closed. But if they can't do that, then we're going to continue enforcement. So, um, I mean, that's how I think I would do it up here too. How I, if they can't move the vehicle, then it's inoperable. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. 8C 2023 Township Construction Progress Van Tour Discussion. Yep, so Jason and I were talking about this today, um, and we've got four proposed dates to do it. They're all off nights, as in a, not a Wednesday night or not a planning commission meeting night. As you can see, we've got a lot of stuff going on that it's going to, it would be hard to squeeze in a van tour on one of those regular meeting nights. So um, we've got proposed Thursday, June 1st, Monday, June 5th. Uh, Monday, June 12th, or Thursday, June 22nd, as dates that would work for both what days. What was the last date again, Eric? I'm sorry. The 22nd, which is a Thursday. So all, all the days in June, uh, the 1st, 5th, 12th, or the 22nd. The 5th and the 12th are Mondays, and then the 1st and the 22nd are Thursdays. I can't do it the 22nd. Okay. Can't do it the first. Okay. I can't do it the first. So we'll say the first is out. 20 seconds 20 out. 20 seconds out. So we're looking at Monday the 5th or Monday the 12th. I can do either one. Doesn't matter. Yep. I think the same. Same for me. Either one. Okay. Let's. I'll let you know. Well, whatever you guys want to do. Yeah. Maybe we'll. we'll I guess keep both options open at this point. We'll check with Bethany. Yeah. yeah. Um, see if she's got one that she can't 
two or both maybe, hopefully not both. Um, and we'll go from there and let everybody know. That time or anything here. Okay. Um, I mean, I just to stay consistent, I would say seven, but I don't think that's, that it doesn't need to be seven. It could certainly be earlier. Yeah, I work till 5.30 after that, it's fine. Okay. This, we would have to notice it, um, but I'm pretty sure it's only 72 hours in advance or something like that. So uh, I, we wouldn't anticipate any public wanting to come along, but <laughs> we could call it a work session or something like that. And, but we do have to notice it, so. Okay. 9A, Township Board Report, Linda. I don't have any report. Oh, I looked at boy. this. The only thing we talked about was the Jen Hill meeting. Okay. Really, and then we talked a lot about paying bills. Yeah. Someone asking us to give them a raffle license. Was uh, that the business association? Yeah, yeah, I'm a little confused about that, but um, and uh, yeah. The Market Senior High School girls softball team can use our Lions Field. But their season will be done soon. The board's not doing much then, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Jason gave a report. I didn't have to say anything. He said everything about our report. So, yeah. Anyways. Okay. They talk a long time for now. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any rec committee report? I do have a rec committee report. Um, they met, I think, last week. So pretty recently. They, Jason said they discussed the additional info submitted for that trust fund grant. Um, so that application is in, um, but the grant administrator that trust fund requested more information. Um, I had Bethany sign those minutes last meeting, so those were submitted as well as some other things. Um, next step on that, uh, assuming that they find everything favorable, would be a site visit in July. So, and that's for that wellhead trailhead project. Can we add that to our road tour? Sure. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Yep. And, and then from a recreation perspective, from my world, um, the uh, community day is August 5th, and we're going to have some recreation. So we're going to have volleyball net, and we're going to have that beanbag toss thing, whatever that's called. What's it called? And some bands, so you can dance. Wow. And we'll be done by 9.30 or 10. Cause where, we, where we hold that? At the Lions Park. Lions Park. Yeah. Where, you know, where is the Lions Park? It's in the middle of Trowbridge. Middle of Trowbridge. Right by Vanden Boom School. Danny, Danny, Danny. I, I'm, I know. I Put don't, that on no, the tour, I've too. Been You've not Park. been there? I've never been to oh, Lions Park. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have to go there. So as a side story, the Lions Club started that park. So that was my dad and his brothers. Oh, okay. So it has a long history for my family. Great. I'll be sure to go there. Yeah, we'll go there on our tour because there's some junk places. <laughs> Anyways, come and come and see it. We have free ice cream cones and free popcorn. Wow. Hand dipped ice cream from Gilbert's. Really? Yeah. And then Jason also said Sorry. that. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> the uh, the final, and I'm drawing a blank on where the funding for this came from, whether it was a grant or what, um, but the final two items for the underpass, which are our bench and a kiosk, have been added by our public works department. So, um, And then Jason did say he also has been talking with uh, Crimmins, uh, developers of Panera Bread and Texas Roadhouse, about um, connecting that path where it comes out on the tunnel right there to those properties uh, to make sure we have that continuous path. Um, so, but you're uh, doing that, you run into the snowmobile trail, and so there's a little bit more involved discussions than just getting crimmins on board. So, wouldn't that be like going uphill a lot? Roger, oh, that's on, they're on their electric that's, that's, bikes, don't worry. Electric bikes and snow machines, okay. Yeah, that's like about a hundred steps up there from the bottom. <laughs> wow, okay. Royal Committee report? Uh, knows. Nothing to report. Uh, our last meeting was canceled from that snowstorm, and then we will meet either next week or the week after. So I'll have an update at the next one. Is that the township that does the sweeping of the streets or the county? County. 
I haven't been around anywhere. It's yet. it's a it's it's a um like a you start at the top, so one year you're at the top, the next year you're down, then you're down, then you're down. Oh. You must be on the bottom this That's year. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. huh. It has a some I forget what that would be called, but yeah. They were yeah. sweeping <laughs> the path pedestrian pathway on US forty one by the flower box the other day. And yeah. water and sweeping. Because I was at the flower box and I was yeah, so I, I'm not quite sure, but we can ask the, where we are in there. No, it's no big deal. And I'm the Road just... Commission meeting did get canceled that the township was going to have with the Road Commission. But I will let you know when the next one is so we can all talk to them about Plowing. the services they provide. Plowing, yes. Plowing, yep. Pete <laughs> Dukes. Yeah. Planning and zoning report. I don't really have anything additional. Um, we've kind of laid out what we'll be doing these next few meetings as far as public hearings and the business that will be conducted. Um, I mean, we're getting a lot of kind of those smaller residential permit applications for fences and decks and garages. And then on the commercial side of things, outside of those larger projects that I think we're all aware of, sign permit applications to reface stuff and sm again it's kind of the smaller smaller scale permit applications a lot of that coming in being that it's construction season so um i would like to backtrack a little bit back to 8c about the van tour is there any but with Denny saying can we go to the wellhead property is there anything else that we would want to see in particular I wrote down the wellhead property, the long year property, Lions Field, maybe a couple property problem property maintenance cases. I mean, is there anything else that comes to anybody's mind that they would want to see on that? Can, can we get very close to that long year thing? Uh, we can Drive as close as the road gets, and if we want to get out, I don't see why they might want to seek their permission to do it first, but we could get out and walk around a little bit. I don't see why not. I, I had some discussion with Jason concerning a land division application for Panera Bread. Do you know if that was ever followed up? Last I heard of that, um, it was with Zappa. And I can't recall if we got an opinion from him on that or not yet. So. Okay. So, so if we go before these short-term rentals have their public hearing, <clears throat> it, it isn't a and maybe everyone's already driven by the short-term rental applicants property already i've driven by most of them just up yeah one way up there on big bay okay so we'll probably there. go that way and maybe we can just have our list then and see mm -hmm. where well, they if are you, if you're going to go up 550 you you'll see you'll it. go by this mr yeah. paffel's place yeah i did look at the center street one again recently so can we drive by where they're going to be putting that rocket in and look at that too? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bring our shotguns and we'll go right at the Grand Loma. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, by the way, it isn't. It isn't Powell Township, so. Yeah, That's I don't it. think they'll have coffee for us. <laughs> Just don't think. Danny might have coffee for us. Um, I, I got some. Know. I got a wine cellar. <laughs> <laughs> got a well stocked. You stop in my house. Thirty Eight Eagles Nest Road. Take a break. The driver will get ginger ale. You think I'm kidding? I'm kidding. No, I'm really not. You want to have a little We're going to buy Togos too or, or, or Casa. All right. <laughs> so if, if there are any other particular locations or sites anybody wants to see, just let Jason or I know and we can make sure it's on the itinerary. What's the status of the Renovari uh, situation? Uh, they are still, as far as I know, kind of working on the financing portion. Because they were, if you recall, kind of stacking some financing tools from the land bank and the state, and mm -hmm. I don't remember who else off the top of my head, but I saw in the a couple of the minutes somewhere, I don't remember exactly, maybe it was the township minutes or our minutes or whatever, uh, that Jason drafted an agreement between the township and Renovari. Mm -hmm. I assume that would be the purchase agreement that was drafted up. Um, and that's been previously shared with the Planning Commission. But if you would want to see that again, I can send I, it along. I, I don't. I don't. Did, we, what, did any of you guys see it? I didn't see it. Well, 
I saw. I don't remember. I don't recall seeing the document for the purchase agreement. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, we I don't remember seeing an actual purchase agreement. Yeah, it was never given to us. There was a there was a proposal from Renovari that was shared with us, but there was nothing, and there was a, a 501 agreement between the city, I guess it's 501, between the city and uh, the township, but other than that, we've never seen any document. Okay. Yeah. Could you say an agreement drafted by Jason? Yeah, he, it was in, uh, it's... It's probably... I don't remember, but yes, he drafted, he got authority from the township to right. draft an agreement okay. with Renovari. Yeah, I, we, we've never seen it. So okay. you, I assume it's the, the purchase option agreement. For which, the could, we, right. could we take a look at that? Yep. Could you yep. share that with us? Certainly. Okay. Great. No, I think we gave them a year. Right. Yep. So they have a year I just, to go through the process. Yeah, I'm not interested in, in the financial terms. I'm interested in what, if there's any... Uh, qualifications, uh, conditions, or whatever that might impact the decision of the planning commission um, or hinder our decision making process in the future that might be contained in that agreement. That's what I'm interested in. Okay. Anything more with planning and the zoning? Oh, you know, as long as we're going to be on the well property, on the well road, um, maybe we could take a cruise down Vonk's property too, just to see how that's coming yeah. up. Uh, three silos? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Good suggestion. Have they, have they uh, completed that? I heard they've sold seven lots so far. But they built. They're all built. They're no. starting. No. Or no, just the lots are. Yeah. yeah. They're starting to build the rental units now. Okay. They just started moving earth around today. Uh huh. Oh wow. And uh, but boy, those lots are small. Mm -hmm. For the for the rentals. No. no for the, for the homes. For the home. Seventy foot lots, and they have a twenty five foot setback, or fifteen on one side and ten on the other. So you can only put a forty five foot white house on there. Not very big. That's probably what you're looking out at. Some other development too. No. Yeah. Anybody see? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you know Eric. What's going in um, by Econo up on top of that hill? They're like moving a whole bunch of earth around today and mm -hmm. digging and. Is that like, a, a hotel? Is that the other hotel? The no, city not that no. I know of. I mean, it could be, but I don't know what it was. I haven't oh. heard anything. Is that in town? Right across from Jeffrey's. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's in the city, city but I, I, I saw that Oh, that's, that's, so. yeah, that's city and that's a Peru or. Is that Best Western? Or? I think a Best Western hotel. Yeah, yeah. So that really? Another hotel? One. Yeah. Wow. And then one downtown on the water. Yeah, I knew about that. And the one that's going into the old dry cleaners. Yeah. Yeah, the old that's dry what cleaners? Just said. Yeah, yeah, right on, right on. There you go. There go. Yeah. Oh, that's a um, boutique kind of, yeah. That would be very big. Because they to park. Oh, yeah, probably not. You have to pay to park. Yeah. I'm trying to find park. <laughs> I think they're going to need, they'll need parking for a hotel. They'll need a, I think it's a, one spot for each room, if I remember right. So they're going to need parking to open up. The, the little boutique thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's not very many units. I'll, I'll, I, I, no, but even if it's I know someone. Ten. We know someone we could ask. Yeah. Charlie. It's yeah. Charlie. I want to go see it before they open. For sure. Buying up a lot of things. And, well, you're, you're sitting on the wrong board for that. <laughs> to go see it? No, I have another thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to use all your avenues, right, Jim? Yep. <laughs> okay. Anyone have any announcements? No one here for public comment. And we'll see if anyone has any additional comments for by planning commissioners. Stephen? No, nope, I'm good. I'm good. Please. Linda? I already did my community day Okay, I can't think of anything either, so... Oh, did you guys read this? Better plans, fewer stands. It was in our um, 
Michigan Planner. It's about planning. Denny, did you did you see it? I get the Michigan Planner. Which Four stands. Yeah, it's about development division buildings that are noticing. Maybe you already saw it. Jason and I saw that and have discussed it. Um, I can certainly make copies of it and send it out. I mean, I, the point that really stuck out to me is that they talk about the public noticing requirements of basically any project, and they, and they talk about it in regards to housing. But the public noticing requirements, you notify property owners, and so you basically are inviting, just by default, the people that are going to oppose. Oh yeah, I read that article. That are going to oppose any higher density develop, development. So you're not you're not get you're not hitting the renters in the community and the other people in the community that are not property owners. Um, so it just again it kind of makes that point. They talk about better uh, better outreach right to get the people that are actually going to benefit and support the yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I guess I, I guess I do have one comment then because I, I think the short term rental thing um, needs to be re looked at. I know the person in his applications is supportive and he wrote um, that he felt short term rentals were better for the community than long term rentals. But we don't have enough housing for the people who live here today and short-term rentals are not housing for people who have jobs in our community well 40 there's going to be 48 units for the Renovari 24 of them are going to be divided into the small studios and one bedrooms that are going to be <laughs> selling for under 200,000 a piece so but we have a lot well, more people than that that need housing well let's start with that we control that we control yeah. that piece of property anyways I still I still think we need to think about how many short-term rentals. Yeah, you're right. I've had uh, three servers had to quit and leave because they couldn't find apartments for the summer. Yeah, and, and Northern's even renting um, dorms, I think, mm -hmm. to students. So there's no, yeah, you, you, can't af you can't afford on a salary of the majority of our young people make in this community a $1,500 apartment. What they're doing now, too, is with these three and four bedroom apartment houses, they're just renting bedrooms out to people. You rent a bedroom now for 500 bucks a month, and then... A shared space. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our employee of our group is just renting a bedroom. Yeah. Thought she's got in a house with... I have a five-bedroom house. I could rent some of those. <laughs> oh, sure. oh my gosh! Six hundred bucks a bedroom. That's not bad. Well, it's sad to think that. It is. It's a sad situation, but it's not just here. No, I said it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yep. You came at the right time, Eric. Good thing your family's sleeping yep. outside. <laughs> okay, meeting adjourned. a couple weeks ago looking for you, but you uh, yeah. Friday night. I saw your credit card. Tina. Yeah. <laughs> I saw your credit card. I saw your credit card. Didn't bounce, did it? I have to go through all the credit cards. Oh, did you? Did you for see? the server. Oh, you saw Amy's then. So we have to check the server.